Hey everyone, Dan from On One here. I'm back with another sneak peek of technologies that we're working on for the future. Today I want to show you the brand new export dialog. And the export dialog has been a labor of love for us. We've taken in over a hundred suggestions from our users to craft what we think is the best export and the most powerful image processor out there. First off, on the left, you'll see presets. The handy thing about the presets is you can turn on multiple presets and do batch processing with multiple outcomes at the same time. Let's say I wanted to make a small JPEG to my desktop as well as a full-size TIFF file and have it compressed with a zip, I can do those at the same time. All right, let me walk you through each pane and some of the improvements. First up is the naming section. Naming your photos is critical to users' workflow, and we've now enabled you to use your own text as well as mixing metadata tokens. So you could add tokens for anything like the file name, the date, a sequence number, or even metadata from the photo. And you can save those naming patterns so you can use them anywhere in the app, including the import dialog or in the batch renaming dialog. Next is the destination section. This is where you control where the photos go. You can send them to the original folder or the desktop or any common location that you want to, have them go into subfolders. You can even have it generate subfolders on the fly based on metadata as well. In this example, I have it dividing out the photos based on a camera that shot them. When you're done exporting, you can create a zip file of the results, send them to an application, or even use an automation script. The file type section lets you control the file format. New is the ability to export copies of the original or to save to DNG format. And for every file type, there's more options for controlling things like compression or transparency on top of bit depth and color profile. When resizing, there are more options as well. You can resize to fit dimensions or the long edge or the short edge, the width or the height, megapixels or percentage, you name it. And again, for each of these options, there's more control over how the photo fits. You can have it fit or fill. You can have it automatically rotate or not rotate. You can sharpen your photos for output using the built-in presets or roll down the manual section for advanced controls. In the metadata pane, you control what metadata is embedded. By default, it'll embed all the metadata from the photo, but you can turn off sections you don't want, like perhaps GPS or ratings and labels, and you can use metadata presets to assign specific metadata on export. And finally, with the watermarks pane, you can add as many watermarks as you want, mixing both images and text. In this example, I used a logo on the left-hand side and text on the right-hand side. The cool thing about the text is it can use those same metadata tokens. So in this case, I've put information about the camera, lens, and exposure and applied it right on top of my photo. And I can save all of this as a preset to make it easy to use in the future. I can even access those presets right inside of Browse without bringing up the export dialog. There you go. There's a sneak peek of what's coming in export very soon. Thanks for watching.